Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we're going to take a look and install the Draw Tight trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Acura MDX. So here you can see the hitch installed on the vehicle, and the cross tube here is hidden. So really all that's hanging down is going to be your hitch receiver. So this is going to be really nice to give a nice OEM look, but still get that utility. Now this is a two inch by two inch opening. And so that's going to be great for a number of different accessories. Now you'll see here, there is a five eighths hitch pin hole. Now the hitch does not come with a pin and clip here, but if you need one of those, we have them here at eTrailer. We also have locking ones available. That way when you put your accessories in, not only is it gonna hold in place, but you can also keep it safe and locked in position. Now you can see from appearance, it is steel construction, so it's very strong. It also has a nice black powder coat finish. And here you can see a rolled steel safety chain loop, which is nice and open. And that way when you're towing, you can put your safety chains here pretty easily, even if it's a large clevis style hook or your standard hook, it's gonna fit perfectly. Now, as far as how much can this hitch actually pull, we're gonna see specs that are pretty good on this. In fact, your gross trailer weight rating, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it, is gonna be 6,000 pounds. Now, your tongue weight rating is the weight that's pushing down on the inside of the receiver tube opening, so that's gonna be your bike racks and cargo carriers. That's gonna be 900 pounds, which is a good amount. Now this can also be used with weight distribution and that tongue weight's gonna stay the same at that 900 pounds, but your gross trailer weight rating goes up to 8,000 pounds. Now before hooking up to a trailer that weighs that much, you're gonna wanna check your vehicle's owner's manual to make sure that the vehicle can actually handle that weight. And so compare the number between the hitch and the vehicle and take the lower of the two to stay safe. Speaking of towing, if you are planning on towing a trailer, it might be a good time to pick up a four pole or seven pole wiring kit. And that way you can hook up to your trailer and send those signals. Now, something that's nice on these draw tights is a lot of times they'll include a welded on bracket here, and that's gonna allow you to mount up your four, four pole. And then you can actually put a bracket here and give it a nice clean look. It's also gonna stay in place very well. So while you're installing your hitch, you might do the wiring at the same time. So let's do some quick measurements here. Now from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the vehicle is actually pretty flush with it. So when you're loading your accessories up, that's something important to note. That way you're not making contact with the rear fascia of your vehicle. And also you can kind of plan that out if you have a tilting bike rack, you can actually check and see the angle to see if you can open up your rear hatch. Now, something else that is gonna be an important measurement is gonna be your ground clearance. So from the top of the opening of the receiver tube to the ground is 14 inches. And that's a decent amount of ground clearance. So you shouldn't have to worry too much just by itself of making any contact with the ground. But if you do have accessories loaded up, like a cargo carrier bike rack, and you go up an incline, that's gonna tilt down. Some of them do sit a little bit lower, so you're gonna to wanna to take that in consideration when driving up inclines or just going off the rougher pavement or some off-road trails, keep that in mind. Now, if you're wondering how bad is the insulation, it's pretty straightforward, and I'm gonna be walking you through that. Now, some of the things that might caution you a little bit but shouldn't be afraid of is you will have to trim this rear fascia. It's pretty easy to do as far as mounting it up. It's also very simple and goes into factory holes. So I'll walk you through each of those steps and we'll get your hitch installed. To begin our installation, we're gonna need to drop our spare tire as the hitch kind of lives up above that. So in order to do that, if you haven't changed your spare tire, hopefully you haven't being that this is a newer vehicle, so to get to our spare tire, we can simply pull this up and we're gonna use our actual tools here that they have in the kit to open this. So just with simple turn here, this is gonna pop out and we're gonna just grab our little angle here because we're gonna be using this to drop it down. Now, you can see here it says spare tire and there's a little pry point here. You can actually probably get that with your fingers. There's then a rubber, a rubber grommet here same thing, just kind of peel that back and that's gonna expose that little square. So from here, just put this on and you can begin to lower it down by going counterclockwise. Now, once you have this down, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a little extra slack and that way you can kind of lift this up 
in order to get this through, you're going to kind of just put this plastic part a little crooked here, and then you should be able to slip that through. Now go ahead and put your spare tire aside. So now with our spare tire lowered down, we're underneath the vehicle, you can see we have these weld nuts already there. Now those threads are in the frame well, and that's where we're gonna actually attach the hardware to hold the hitch up. Now this is a essentially new vehicle, so it, they're pretty clean, but if you have used this for a little bit and have some miles on your vehicle, these can actually get a little bit of road grime, dust, dirt, debris, whatever it may be and that can actually cause issues for the hardware to go in. So I recommend taking a tube brush. We have these here at E-Trailer. I'm just kind of cleaning these out. You can use uh, a penetrating oil works fine. Um, really anything that kind of gets this grime out, some, you know, some cleaner that is safe for paint. And you just kind of go through, make sure those are clean. Now before we get the hitch in place, there's actually gonna be a little bit of clearance issue with this center part of the rear fascia. Now, if you want to, you can actually drop this piece out to make it a little bit easier to cut, but you can also do it while it's on the vehicle. There's nothing behind here that you need to worry about, um, but really, you're just gonna be trimming this out so that receiver part of the hitch sits here. Now, I've taped it out just to kind of give me some clean lines. You can mark it however you want to. Uh, these are just kind of roughly based on the instructions. Now, as far as cutting this, I know it can be a little bit scary, especially on a vehicle that you know, it's nice and clean, but we have uh, tin snips here, and that should work pretty well, cutting through the plastic. Um, you may have to kind of work at it, but honestly, for cleaner lines, what I do is I use my angle grinder and kind of go through here and then clean it up with a file. If you have another rotary tool or a hacksaw or whatever your cutting method is preferred that's gonna give you those clean lines, go ahead and do that. Now be careful if you are using a powered cutting tool. This metal or the plastic here can actually get pretty hot as you're cutting through it. But go ahead and you can take off some of the larger little shavings here that have accumulated. And if you have a file, you're gonna wanna go through and clean these edges up just to give it a nice finished look. And you just kind of go back with your file and kind of work it out at a few different angles and that way you're gonna get these burrs off and it's gonna look nice and clean. So now we're gonna be putting our hitch in place. You might wanna grab an extra set of hands as it can be heavy and putting it in place, trying to feed hardware, is a lot easier with an extra set of hands. Now here's our hardware that we're gonna be using and there's a conical tooth washer. And so you can see these teeth here, that's gonna face up against the hitch. So have these ready, that way when you place it up, you can actually finger tight these in and it's gonna hold that hitch in place for the rest of them. So you're gonna to wanna to line these holes here. And once you have those in place, you can pick any of them and just kind of thread it in enough. And that's gonna hold it in place. And if you have it up and you still have your hardware, you can go ahead and do that to three on each side. So now we're gonna go back with a 22 millimeter socket. We're gonna just tighten these up. Now you don't have to get too terribly crazy with these because we're gonna go back with the torque wrench and make sure they're at the proper spec. But for now, let's zip this into place. So now we're gonna go back with our torque wrench and that same 22 millimeter socket and torque it down to the specs that's in the manufacturer's instructions. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, you're gonna to want to get one. We have those here at E-Trailer or you can rent one at an auto parts store. And putting it to the proper spec is gonna make sure that these bolts are not too tight or too loose and it's gonna keep your hitch in place long, for a long time and nice and safe. So go ahead and torque down all six of those bolts. Now with all my hardware torqued to the proper spec, we're pretty much ready to use this. Now we do still have to put our spare tire up and with the hitch in place, it might get a little bit tricky to put it up. So as this goes up, 
might be a little helpful here. You kind of put this side up first and then as it heightens into place, you shouldn't have any clearance issues with that hitch. And that was a look, an installation of the draw tight trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Acura MDX. Thanks for watching.